Thank you very much and a warm welcome back to Clydesdale Cricket Club in Glasgow for Long Hop Down Under. We have a packed show ahead of us tonight after another thrilling week at the ICC Cricket World Cup. New Zealand set a clutch of records as they demolished England. Pakistan made the worst ever start to a Cricket World Cup match. And Queensland proved that you can move a cricket match 10,000 miles from Glasgow, but it'll still get rained off. Tonight's opponents are England. And has there ever been a better opportunity for the Scots to overcome their old enemy? We'll, we'll hear the views of our studio guests as well as those from the Scotland camp and fans in New Zealand. And if you want to tell us how you think the match will go today, you can tweet us at QTV underscore sports and use the hashtag follow Scotland. Everybody and their grannies here at Clydesdale tonight. The BBC are here. Sky Sports are here, Cricket Scotland are here, but in a published, uh, in a change to our published schedules, unfortunately, Glenrothes Cricket Club are not. But fear not, ladies and gentlemen, because the good souls of cricket uh, here at Clydesdale have magnanimously agreed to step into the breach for our bowl off challenge, and we'll see how they fared on home turf later on in the programme. Now, our first guest is a young man who's making an impression north and south of the border. Despite an injury-blighted 2014, he made his first-class debut for Durham and York Stewart Broad for a duck. And wouldn't we all like to see a little bit more of that later on tonight? He narrowly missed out on selection for Scotland at the Cricket World Cup. Please welcome Gavin Main. <laughs> Welcome to the show. Have a seat, please. Oh, Gavin, uh, welcome to the show. Thanks very much uh, for coming. I suppose, uh, in a sense, it's disappointing that you're here because uh, yeah. you'd much rather be down in uh, yeah. New Zealand and Australia at the moment. Yeah, it's a shame, but uh, I think it's a strong enough squad that even if I was. Back at the New Zealand game. It was a game of mixed fortunes for Scotland. Struggled a little bit up front with the bat, but then the bowlers really had a good game and made New Zealand work for their win. Yeah. Um, I, well, while I was watching, I was thinking, um, for those conditions, I think the New Zealand opening pair are the best new ball partnership in one day cricket at the minute. Um, and the home side. Uh, so I think... I mean, you saw it with England. No matter who you are, as a batsman, you're going to be struggling up top. Um, and Bolt's first two wickets. Is, I well mean, is there any batsman in the world that, that, that they wouldn't have got out to those? I mean, I, I watched uh, Southies uh, against England. Southies wicket, Moeen Ali, mm -hmm. uh, in swinging back to left hand. I mean, that was just yeah. it was a thing thing of beauty yeah. to watch. The, the kind of thing that you must aspire to yeah, as a young exactly. bowler. Yeah, exactly. That's that's. Uh, that's what the end goal is, but yeah, no, I think they not necessarily would have got out to the ball, but there was enough balls in the opening spell where world-class players would be struggling. Tell me a little bit about the, the leaders in the, the Scotland camp. It, it's long been my impression that Scots, Scotland's batsmen always do better when Callum posts a score, Callum McLeod mm -hmm. in particular. Who are the leaders in the group? I mean, who do the other players look to to, to set the example? Um, I think there's quite a few of them. Uh, obviously, you've got um, Kyle up top as well, who's very experienced, been in the county game for however many Long years time now, now yeah. um, and scored a lot of runs for Scotland. Um, and then obviously you've got Callum, who's destructive. So I think that's the trend is when he scores runs, they often come at a quick, quick rate. And... Um, that puts us in a dominating position. But then you've got Press and the captain, who's also done very well. Um, a calm head as well. So um, he knows, I think when it comes to pressure situations, a lot of them look to him. A um, lot's been spoken of about Ian Wardlaw as well, and the conditions maybe suiting his style of bowling. Yeah. Uh, and we saw a little bit of that in, yeah. the, in the New Zealand game. Yeah, I think, I think Ian's, he gets good swing the ball. He's quite round arm, so he gets gets good shape and he's got a bit of pace about him so I think he'll do well in New Zealand I think most of the bowlers really because they should they should do well because that's perfect conditions for them 
if they want to be beating um, the better nations and better, yeah. Afghanistan as well. Two, two quick questions for you. Um, Grant Bradburn, I'm fascinated by Grant. I think he's uh, uh, just uh, uh, such an excellent addition to the Cricket Scotland setup. What have your impressions been of him in these first six months? Um, I first met Grant in the Dutch games and I think he's... I think we've got a clip of that actually. Uh, uh, carry on. Yeah, he's, uh, he's very... He's very calm, uh, so I think he's like a calming influence in the team. Mm -hmm. You get coaches where if you've not had a good first half of the game, uh, they can go quite hard at you, um, but I think he, takes, he goes the other way. And he's just got so much experience behind him. He's, um, he's more about confidence and making sure you're in the right headspace to play the best you can instead of uh, pressure coming on you like for the big game, I'm sure. Um, I'm sure before the match, he was just not so focused on cricket specifics, but yeah. just making sure the boys were in the relaxed. right in the right frame of mind. Yeah. Uh, well, it's something we'll come on to to talk about a, a little later with Craig. Uh, for the moment, though, ladies and gentlemen, Gavin Main. Now, tonight's match with England is, of course, being played in Christchurch, which is undergoing its own transformation in the wake of the earthquake in 2011 that devastated much of the city. Our reporter, Nick Rugby, has been taking in the sights with Scotland all-rounder Michael Leesk uh, and local guide Kelly Stock. Another city and another match on the horizon for Scotland. The squad have arrived in Christchurch. It's a city recovering, a city rebuilding. Shattering earthquakes here in 2010 and 2011 took nearly 200 lives. Scotland's Michael Leesk was given a tour this week of some of the worst affected areas. And although he's been here before, it's a place that is constantly changing. First time was for the qualifier back in January last year. That would have been the first time around the same. So things would be quite different now. Yeah, oh yeah, everything's again still moved on again. I think there's still obviously quite a lot of work to do, and mm -hmm. is there a guesstimate as to how long it's going to take? You know, I think it's kind of one of those situations where you'll be able to come here now, come here in a year's time, yeah. and see the change, but come here in five years' time, come here in ten years' time, and the city's going to continue like, to pro like, progress. Christchurch is finding itself a new identity. It sees opportunity to innovate and remake itself from the rubble and the heartache. Okay, so this is my favourite coffee shop. Um, and I think we're going to go in there, we'll see if we can get them, we might be a little bit early, but we're going to see if we can get some flying burgers. So, sounds a little bit different. Um, they come in Starlight like 3 burgers, sets of 3, and they come flying around the roof and land at the station closest to you guys. Expect that in the slightest, but it's absolutely lovely, yeah. We'll be back, yeah, absolutely. The Restart Mall is a good example of how the city has coped. It's a movable collection of containers, and this, say those who live here, may be the thing that saved the city from becoming a ghost town in the aftermath of the quakes. Scotland actually played the first game against Canterbury at the Hagley Oval, so it'll be nice to go back there and play against England, obviously. Um, I think it's nice for the people of Christchurch to have cricket back and knowing that they missed the the Rugby World Cup, I think having a major tournament here is good for them. And this has been our opportunity to really kind of say, hi, you guys, you know, we're here, we want you to come and visit us, take a look at what's happening, and yeah, it's been really good for the people of the city, I think. I mean, you're travelling all around the world, I mean, you've seen some devastation when we've been here still, I mean, there's still a lot of kind of rubble from a lot of the buildings, but again, you see how much work's actually been putting in at the same time, so it kind of does take it back to perspective that you are playing cricket, but you're also visiting someone else's country. So this is the transitional or Kabul Cathedral, as locals like to call it. Um, I think it's fairly evident why it's called the Kabul Cathedral with the Kabul tubes. This is a, a temporary re replacement for the actual Christchurch Cathedral, um, since that is still um, a little bit up in the air as to what's going to be happening with that and the space there. It strikes me that a lot of the, the things that have been put up, like the, the container, the restart area and this cathedral as well, they are very popular and they do have a sort of feeling of permanence about them. Mm -hmm. um, will there be a wrench, do you think, for the, the people who have sort of seen this stuff grow up and have sort of lived with it for a number of years? They might not want to see them go when, when the time comes. Yeah, I mean, I think people, especially at Restart Mall, um, places like this, 
most people do get attached to them, especially following such a, a big upheaval in your life. But I think we, we know that this is part of the transitional city and that this is not a permanent space and that eventually we're going to need to, to build permanent, safe buildings. So we kind of know that we're going to miss them, but I think, you know, looking forward to the future, the opportunities that are abound are just huge. A fantastic story there in Christchurch, although I dare say the only flying burgers we're likely to see in Glasgow will be in Sylvia Hall Street on a Saturday night. Now time for our next guest, thanks. Now time for our next guest and a man who has first-hand experience uh, of leading Scotland into battle, both in a World Cup and against England. He's Scotland's most successful national football manager. Please welcome Craig Brown. <laughs> Thanks for coming on the show. Have a seat, please. A lovely blend of youth and experience on the sofa yes, tonight. Yes, you always tonight. sit me beside the youngest, most handsome guy in the building. <laughs> <laughs> um, Craig, it's, it's a little known fact about you that you're actually quite a big cricket fan. Yes, I, I like all sports, but you know, as a PE teacher originally, you know, obviously we did take part in all sports and I, I did play a bit of cricket when I was younger. Your brother tells us that you were, uh, or told me last time I saw him, that you are quite a handy batsman in, in your day. Well, I tried to, but yeah, I would say I was uh, moderately good. I played at school in the school team and I went to the Scottish School of Physical Education and I managed to get into the SSPE team for a game or two, but that was quite an achievement because there's some good cricketers then. Uh, not, not something that took you down a professional route. We just see a photo of you there. I think that's your bottom left, is that right? That's the young that looking version there. Yeah. <laughs> Look that's at that a year or two ago, bottom left, yeah. Fantastic. Um, you obviously, as, as I said in the introduction, have first-hand experience of leading Scotland to big tournaments in, in Euro 96 and again in, in France 98. Is there such a thing as a, a big tournament mentality that you have to get into when you're, you're leading a team, not just of players of course but backroom staff squad members there's, there's there's a lot that goes into it yes i think i think there is a mentality which is required for a, a tournament it's a different mentality because certainly in football as in, in cricket you're away preparing in advance of the tournament so it's not just the tournament time alone you know for example the first tournament i went to was with sir alec to mexico we had to go for three weeks altitude training in new mexico in america so you're taking these guys away for a month at a time and then it's all right when the tournament's on, time passes mm -hmm. quickly, but when you're preparing, you're waiting and it, you get anxious and anxious and a bit nervous sometimes. What, what were the, some of the, the challenges that you overcame on those long trips? You had some interesting techniques at times, didn't you? Well, I, well, you tried to involve them in whatever possible. You know, there would be a quiz, you know, you would have competitions of various kinds in the training pitch and competitions. So Alec, Alec Ferguson, he was a quiz expert. He, no one would beat him at Trivial Pursuit. In fact, he always took the doctor, Professor Hillis, beside him and did his team. Can, can I ask, did the game go on just long enough for him to win? Exactly. Yeah. And it went yeah. on until he won. <laughs> <laughs> That's the old Bill Shankly one. When the, <laughs> the press answered, knocked at his door and his wife answered and said, where is Mr Shankly? He's down playing football with the kids. When will he be back? He'll be back when he wins. <laughs> Um, the the build-up to France 98, of course, saw Scotland pitted against uh, Brazil, who at the time were the world champions in the opening match of the tournament. Uh, you, um, you approached that game in, in a way that disarmed your own players and, and maybe overcame them nerves, didn't you? Well, I think so, because the, the Brazilians had this habit of going out hand-in-hand, hand, holding hands. Now, that's because they lost the game in the qualification games against Bolivia. And uh, Dunga, who was the captain was so incensed that they, lo they lost in the altitude of Bolivia. They were playing them back in, in their own home base at Rio. And he was going round the dressing room holding hands and he says, right, we're going out like that. And they went out and they won five one. So every game the Brazilian team held hands. But our guys didn't know that. So when I saw them holding hands, we were just to follow them out for the opening game of the World Cup. And if you don't mind me using the word I used, I said, look, guys, I've just seen them. I'm shitting themselves. <laughs> <laughs> so the lads laughed at that and it took a bit of the strain off. Uh, Gavin, Grant's a, a big one for 
relaxation and the build up to, to big matches. He's, he's very much got a focus on taking the pressure off the players and that's been true of this tournament as well, hasn't it? Yeah, uh, he's just, he's tried to, um, they've prepared in such a way that they feel that however they do now, they couldn't have prepared better. Yeah. Uh, they've been out there saying in all the interviews that it's the best prepared Scottish team to go out. So he's really taken comfort in that, that the performances should, should c hopefully come with uh, the preparation that they've had. I, I read uh, last year, uh, there was an article that came out last year, Craig, uh, it said that Donald Dewar had actually, uh, the late Donald Dewar, had written a speech in the event that Scotland beat Brazil in that match, in that opening match of France 98. And, and he said in the speech, I've got the quote here, tonight we have new legends to add to our role of honour. It's a day and a feeling that few Scots will ever forget. We didn't get to hear it in 1998, but I suspect, Gavin, if, if Scotland do a job in England tonight, we could probably trot it out for the papers tomorrow, couldn't we? Hopefully. Yeah, hopefully. hopefully. <laughs> is it, tell me, uh, Craig, just to finally, is, is there a uniqueness to playing England? You, you've obviously faced England on a couple of occasions uh, with, with good results and bad. Is there something special about facing the old enemy? Well, I think so. You know, in Scotland, we don't talk about England, we talk about them, don't we? And there is a certain hype when you're, when you're playing against England. Of course, it's accentuated because of the scramble for tickets. And, you know, that is one of the big issues. And players are looking for more tickets. I always tried to make sure, I would say to our players, like, for example, Colin Henry played at Blackburn. Phone Alan Shearer, find out how many they're getting. <laughs> <laughs> and he would say, well, they're getting 12 complimentaries and they can get 20 to buy. Now, I told a lie. I, I hope the only time I told a lie to the chief executive, England are getting 15 complimentaries. <laughs> <laughs> we must match that. You don't want your players at any time to feel that they're disadvantaged and we wanted them to feel, you know, and, and you know, we went to a World Cup time. We wore the kilt, which gave us a great edge, I think, because, you know, it was an impressive sight going on to the part of the prongs wearing the kilt. Well, it's a, it's a big thing that you've talked about. I've heard you talk about the past. It's the importance, actually, of just even the appearance of players and, and the smartness well, of players. You'll note that I have my, uh, apologies to my sound man for touching my microphone, my official Cricket Scotland tie on tonight. Well, Jack, can I say to you, you know, I watched some of the preparation and I watched the Scottish cricket team in Dunedin and I was hugely impressed. Uh, and I really mean that because I watch football teams and they're going in kind of sloppy tracksuits and they're all in listening to individual headsets. Yes, they, they head and if it's bad weather, they've got hats and gloves. You never see that with Manchester United. They are the most immaculate team all the years when Alec Ferguson was there. Badge, the tie was right up there. Yeah. The Scottish cricket team, it, it was noticeable to me because mm -hmm. I look for these things. In Dunedin, they were there preparing and I thought they were immaculate and that tie was... Very much. The yes, board. yes. The tartan, the tartan trues uh, there, um, and the the Scotland tartan, which has been specially designed and, and supplied to me by PSL uh, Sports. If I could just put a, a little plug in for Rennie there, <laughs> uh, Craig. Um, we need to we need to move on, but for the time being, uh, ladies and gentlemen, Craig Brown. Great stuff from Craig. Uh, now, the eagle-eyed among you may have noticed uh, this book uh, next to me, which is uh, Omar Henry's uh, biography by Keith Graham, our own Keith Graham here in Scotland, uh, the man in the middle. Uh, earlier this week, I had the opportunity to speak to the former Proteus and Pollock Cricket Club legend about today's match and also about South Africa's chances in this tournament. Uh, but I started the interview by asking him of his first impressions of playing cricket here in Scotland. I think the very first one was um, the surprise I got when I arrived in Scotland on the wet conditions I had to play in. Then the other one was the passion that the cricketers uh, throughout Scotland, not just in Glasgow, but in Glasgow it was it was it was very strong and it was uh, and they were fierce competitors um, and it, it, it they, they really challenged you and I think they brought the best out of me because. I firmly believe at that time um, I had an ambition to play at a higher level 
um, whether it was test level or at the county level. Um, and, and, but I wasn't ready really to take on uh, what I did in Scotland. Um, but the club cricket and everything else sort of gave me that uh, a real kickstart and, and, and put me on the right track. It must have been frustrating for you at the time not to have been able to develop at the higher level in your own country. You know, how did that, how did that make you feel having to travel so far around the world in order to get those opportunities? Well, it, 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 was, it was something that I was very much against, um, but I knew as an individual at the time there wasn't much I could do towards it uh, in terms of it politically. But um, on the cricket side, I felt, you know, that was part of me going around the world, wherever the opportunities are, uh, and develop myself, and hopefully through that process I can come back if and when the opportunity came that the politicians can sort out whatever differences there were um, hopefully I can become a catalyst and really assist that cricket as a whole can 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 grow within South Africa. Finally have the opportunity to go back and, and represent your country as the, as the first non-white to do so can you describe how that felt at the time? And when you look back on it now, how does it make you feel? For most of us, and especially for me, I thought I was never, it was never going to happen in my lifetime. So it, it was a dream come true. Um, it was a time whereby you basically just played cricket because of your passion and the love and you, you, you wanted to make a career out of it. I then realized that I had an opportunity. I was, I was playing good cricket in South Africa and in Scotland. A flip side of that was, was that I had to leave a lot of work and a lot of friends and and uh, a commitment I made to Scotland. I had to leave that behind. What well, what do you think the keys to success are for Scotland against this English team? Well, you've got to beware because um, that's a lion that has been hurt a lot um, over the last two days, and they they would like to put the record straight. Let's turn to your own country, South Africa. They got off to a comfortable winning start against neighbours Zimbabwe. How do you rate their chances in this World Cup? If you look at that first five, six batters, um, they're all match winners. They, they can be very, very, very destructive. If they score enough runs, then I think the bowling um, won't be too bad. And, and, and they've got people that can take wickets up front. We might battle um, with our death bowling. Omar, it's been an absolute pleasure. Thank you very much for joining us. Thank you very much, and I hope everything is the best and Scotland to win. Inspiring stuff from Omar Henry, and the full interview from Omar will be available on the QTV Cricket YouTube channel. It's well worth a watch. Now, time for our third and final guest. They say that in order to be a good wicketkeeper, you first need to be a good talker. Well, it's time to find out if that's the case. Please welcome Scotland's 1999 Cricket World Cup wiki, Alec Davies. <laughs> Alec, welcome to the show. Thanks. Have a seat. Oh, welcome to the show. Um, 1999, God, it seems like a, a long time ago now. It was, of course, Scotland's first World Cup. Let's uh, take you all the way back there. It was a challenging tournament for Scotland, mm -hmm. I think it's safe to say. It was. It was the first time we'd you know, been in... It was new territory for us or for everyone. And uh, I don't think the coaches realised you know, the level of performance because um, we were out of our comfort zone and we're playing you know, countries, Australia, West Indies... Um, but I think we felt that the Bangladesh game was the, the one that was our World Cup. You know, they were playing, we played them the year before, we'd beaten them a couple of times, and we felt that was the one that we really w wanted to win. I, I don't think Bangladesh um, had, had won, uh, I'm trying um, to think if they'd won an ODI up to that point even, but they certainly they haven't won a, a World Cup game. Um, mm. it, it was going well for Scotland in that match. I mean, it arguably was. until today, that was Scotland's best opportunity it of winning a, a Cricket was, World Cup was. match. We sort of restricted them, but we, we dropped the crucial catch, actually. Gavin Hamilton was bowling, and we dropped someone in second slip, and he went on to score 50. But it was still gettable, it was still gettable. And then, as usual, the new ball, 
and we lost a few wickets and then well, let's, let, let's take a look Gavin at the clip Hamilton. because you, yeah. you and Gavin were, yeah. were in so batting and we, we can take a look um, at this clip oh dear. now. And you can, <laughs> I think I know what this is. So you, you've just <laughs> driven the ball uh, back it. down uh, the wicket and it's flicked off That's the right. bowler's fingers and Gavin there just caught short of his right. ground. It, it, it must bring back painful memories looking at that. It's quite a defining moment. Um, I think something very Scottish it about it. <laughs> it, was, uh, it was, I, I actually wish it was me that was going out because Gavin was on sixty odd. Yeah, he was well set. He was point. very well set, and I thought if he stayed there, then we could have put me up. But the boys behind us were a little bit inexperienced, and we just sort of. I tried to. Get, I got thirty odd, but it was just too much, you know. Um, and that was that was it. It was history, isn't it, really? But. You, you, um, pers you personally have, have a very colourful background coming into Scottish cricket because you, you were born in, a, in an American mm. hospital in Pakistan, Pakistan, is that right? That's but right. With a Welsh father. That's right. And you played cricket in Australia and England. <coughs> My dad is a civil engineer, so he worked on the Mang Mangla Dam in Pakistan, so in Rawalpindi. So I was born in Rawalpindi and then he went to Australia after that. How, how, did you, how did you eventually come to Scotland and start playing um, in Scotland? And then we went, I went to school in Wales and I went to University of Reading and then there was a sports coaching course at University of Edinburgh uh -huh. and it was a coaching diploma and I came up here for one year and then it sort of really just took off. I played cricket and then got a job and got married and you know that was it really. So. Um, I enjoyed it, so it wasn't the weather. <laughs> <It's a laughs> See, and, and we still have a reputation, Craig, for coaching good coaches in Scotland, don't we? Yes, we do. In, all, in, in a number of sports. Yeah, we do, certainly in football. I, I'm not too conversant with the cricket coaching scene, but mm. uh, You've got football. your own experience of, of some of Cricket Scotland's uh, uh, higher echelons, though, haven't you? Well, I've got to say, I heard a wonderful presentation in the Borders a few years ago from one of your cricket colleagues, a guy called Andy Tennant. And, you know, Andy sold cricket magnificently well to the coaches who were there at this Borders convention. You know, all sports were involved. Now, if you left that course, you would be a cricket fan, having listened to Andy Tennant. And if he's mm. anything to do with the development of cricket, I can tell you, you're very fortunate. Yeah. Mm. Well, he's in the bar tonight, Andy Tennant. So, uh, I, th I think... Um, I think in the uh, the local vernacular, you might have given him a pure ready there, um, <laughs> uh, which means he's blushing uh, for the he uninitiated. Deserves, deserves it, uh, yeah. Alec, just just finally look forward if you could to tonight's game. Where do you think tonight's um, game will be won or lost? I think the England batsmen. I think uh, Morgan and Bell are the key guys. I think if they get you know you know if they get in and get a sighter, but I still think Scotland have. They've shown that they've got good technique under pressure and when they were struggling against New Zealand and everyone's sort of tweeting and saying they're, they're finished and they, they came through it and under a lot of pressure and you need under pressure you need good technique and they did and they kept their head kept their nerve got a decent total and stuck to their guns when they were bowling so they want a bit of a role I think they've you know they, 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 they've got a bit of momentum and I think England I mean who knows what's going on there um, they're struggling um, and you know, when people are under pressure, I mean, any, anything can happen. Anything can happen. So, it's it's all to win, really. It, it really, win. it really yeah. is. Um, there's yeah. nothing to lose, really. Yeah, abso so absolutely. I, mean, I, th I think it's important to remember England aren't a bad team. They're they're a no, good team playing no. badly, and, yeah. and there's 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 big difference between yeah. the two. And um, I mean, it does good it, if they do win. It gives a lot of credit to the associate countries. Um, I know they're trying to restrict the number, but. Um, it's not as if they've been doing poorly either, you know. So if it wants to be a global event, you know, they've got to include countries, you know, that are, you know, like Scotland, and, and get as many countries as possible. Otherwise, you just call it a, a trophy, you know, just call it something like that. Um, well, it, it is know. a subject that, that we're going to come mm. on to later in the series with, with mm. other guests, and it certainly seems to be coming a debate that mm. is not now restricted to the fringes of cricket. It's no. a debate that's that's engulfing mainstream cricket conversation. Anyway, for the time being, thank you very much. Mm. Alec Davis, much. everybody. Thank you time marches on, and we're almost at the end of this week's show, but... The important moment has come. It's time to see how our host Clydesdale did in this week's Bowl Off Challenge. I had to go far, right arm gas, Kent Cricket Club, sign me up now.
active secure, right arm fast, medium. Yeah, there we go. That's the camel hack, left arm fast. Say Duncan, left arm that. Monadale! Uh, Zayn Ashraf, right arm class. Jay, only one point. Reaction? I don't know what to say. Bit of a disgrace, but I mean, we've got to look at these conditions. They're going to down to the conditions, I think. <laughs> Let's take a look at the scoreboard if we can quickly. Clydesdale, uh, remarkably oh. unable to unseat Air Cricket Club, who still lead the way on four points. Next week we look forward to Stirling County. I think to be honest the camera <coughs> operator was more in danger there than the stumps. But anyway, plenty of work for Condalang to do with them in the nets in pre-season. Uh, we're almost out of time guys. Just very quickly, a prediction from you for tonight's match. Gavin. Gonna go Scotland. Gonna go Scotland. Craig. I think the two M's, Moors and Morgan, will be miserable and moaning. <laughs> Excellent, I love it. <laughs> Scotland to win from Alec Davis. My thanks to uh, guests, to Gavin, to Craig and to Alex. Big hand, please. <laughs> now, of course, you can keep up with uh, all the coverage of this match in a number of ways. Uh, in a couple of minutes' time, or in fact now, in fact, Sky Sports World Cup begins its live ball-by-ball -ball coverage. Uh, and you can tune in to that uh, for the rest of the evening. If you're not uh, a night owl, then highlights throughout the day on the same channel. And if you're watching Council Telly in Scotland, STV tomorrow, Monday, 11pm GMT. Uh, remember, live scores and other results, icc-cricket.com and all the exclusive behind-the-scenes coverage of the Scotland camp available on their YouTube channel. That's youtube.com forward slash cricket Scotland TV. That's all we have time for. My thanks to our partners in this production, HF Electrical Prosperity Financial Solutions, DM Hall and the University of West of Scotland. Thanks to our hosts and guest, Cricket Club Clydesdale. Yay! Thanks to everybody here in the bar. Thanks to you at home for watching as well. Uh, we are back at the same time on Wednesday when I'll be previewing the Afghanistan game with Fraser Fraggle Watts and former Scotland and GB athlete Brian Whittle. In the meantime, remember the hashtag follow Scotland, support the team. Good luck tonight, Scotland. From all of us here at Clydesdale and Long Hop Down Under, have a very good evening.